This episode is brought to you by cloudpano.com. Adding more revenue to your business is simple. Offer more value. With Cloud Pano, you can create 360 tours and present them to your clients quickly and efficiently. It only takes five minutes to create a VR tour with cloudpano.com and your clients will be thrilled. You can now avoid monthly fees with their new lifetime license option. For a limited time, you can save $100 on a lifetime license using the code shooting spaces at checkout. Join the movement and join Cloud Pano today. This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. And we want to welcome you to tonight's really exciting episode. But uh, before we tell you what we're going to do, but you can kind of see what we're going to do. I just want to say, hey, Brian, how you doing? You excited? Yeah, what's going on, Rich? All is well. We're yeah. pretty excited. Episode 100. It's pretty- 100. That's pretty incredible. And we've got a, a cast. It's like uh, better than uh, Gilligan's Island. We've got a cast of, of thousands. And uh, let's introduce everybody. So uh, we have Wayne Capilli. Say hi, Wayne. Hello. Okay. Wayne from Monterey, California. We have Chris Cole. From Seattle, you're up above Seattle, right? No, I'm actually in Kennewick. Kennewick, Tri okay. Cities, yes, Eastern Washington. Great. I see uh, Dan Milstein. How are you, Dan? Doing well, thank you, Rich. Where are you from, Dan? For the people that don't know, oh, uh, somewhere under a rock over there. I'm from Westchester County, New York, 30 miles north of New York City. That's on uh, Long Island, on the island, and uh, no, I leave Long Island <laughs> to Brian. Uh, I'm on okay. the North Shore. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Long Island Sound. I should probably not leave that out, huh, Brian? Yeah, exactly. No, we're uh, a body of water across from each other. But I think I think when I I went out to visit Dan, I think it was about an hour trip, so it wasn't so bad. About an hour away from each other. Okay. And before I get before I get in trouble, I want to last but not least, we have the ever effervescent Sam Chen. Hi, Sam. Aloha. Where's your cat? I expected to see a kitty cat. We're one and the same, so I might run in the closet and then come back as a black cat any minute. <laughs> Going to hold that to you. Awesome. And we got Brian Berkowitz over there. From, yeah, what's uh, going from on? Yeah, yeah, I didn't even realize this beforehand, but we have like a little East Coast, West Coast thing going on. We did. Yeah, we're uh, numbered, but. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, what's uh, going on? What are, we, uh, what are we doing today? Tell the, tell the audience. No, we got an episode 100, so we figured why not bring back a bunch of people who I think I think everyone has been on the podcast before. Um, you know, people who we're friends with. We all uh, shared a nice dinner back in Vegas together, um, except for Wayne. I don't think you were there. Um, so all of us but Wayne. And um, well, bring some Christine and, and Sam. You did, yeah, we did. After, mm -hmm. Oh, after the oh, okay. Well, Dan, we you were not there. You were entertaining everybody in the bar. I came in for the late night dinner with them. <laughs> yeah, we oh, went and had Vegas, the Vegas roast, strip walk. Roast beef, yeah. and it was good, and we had a really good time. And Dan insisted on his aviation headsets in case anyone's wondering why he sounds like a pilot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, couldn't could let me wear the Logitech headset, so thank you. Yeah, it's very entertaining, but uh, it's very appropriate because you, uh, you like flying in that, that, those helicopters. Got to watch out for those helicopters. But uh, um, so... What is everybody doing in 2020? Um, Wayne, let me start off with you. What's what's going on? I know you got some really big things coming up. Yeah, well, I'm doing. Uh, I'm instead of doing just the one um, workshop with the guides, I decided to do a, a couple of my own. And, mm -hmm. and um, on top of that, after um, PFRE, um, on the assistance of several people, I'm actually doing a video series and writing a book. And writing a book. And Did you say? Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. And you're doing your uh, workshop in Dallas, Texas. Is that correct? Yes. And um, oh. it's, yeah, it's, just, like I said, this is my first one all by myself. And, but it is um, real estate orientated instead of architectural. And so I'm going to go through all the stuff of getting proper exposure. And, but one of the things that I, that, I'm really going to get into is advanced tilt shift using 
using a, a tilt shift lens properly. That, that'll be a lot of the um, workshop where for a lot of the first day. So I shot my 17 Canon for the whole day today. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a lot of, a lot of, Focusing and uh, but it was it was really nice. Uh, no, that's great. And uh, your workshops all full. Is it uh, a go? And well, it's well the, well. the thing is, be, being is that I'm by, by myself. Instead of doing it with a lot of people, I only have six people. Maybe. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, two of them might um, two of them might drop out, but for the four or five people that are there, it and for two days at a ten thousand square foot house. This is going to be the best workshop I ever have. <laughs> great, great. Awesome. Are you doing a little yeah. tour or you're just going to Dallas? I'm going to Dallas and then that's where the workshop is. Uh, but I'm saying you're just doing one workshop or you're doing a couple of them throughout the year. Nope. That's, I mean, I, that's the only one I have in workshop now, but there are a couple of houses that, I, that I'll be This all count because I'm shooting this house and I figured since I'm shooting this house, it would be a really nice way to do um, a small workshop. And then, so I have a couple of houses that I'm shooting later on in the year that I will do the same premise of, you know, shooting this house um, and they're big enough that they will allow people to um, work in them. So yeah, so two or three more workshops for myself and then one with the guys. And the one with the guys is usually November time, right? Or October? Yep. No, it's normally, normally November. We're and, starting you're in and you're planning on having that again this year? Yes. All right, cool. Oh, awesome. Who should we go to next? Um, let's bring in Sam Chen, since I waited on you last. What's up, Mr. Chen, and what are you doing, and what's new, and what's exciting? Well, you know, as you know, I'm kind of in a little niche in San Diego here. I'm in the luxury real estate market, and it's really the best of both worlds. It's got the consistency and stability of real estate, but it's got the challenges and the cool projects and the the freedom to really kind of give it your all and take your time and get paid for it. So um, the thing I like about it is that you don't constantly have to go out and prospect for new clients and get under bid and go through all that process. So I'm going to continue to do that and be more picky about the clients I get. Um, like I want to shoot less, believe it or not, this year. And, you know, we can talk about personal projects later, but I'm going to leave more room for personal projects. But one of the things that I um, kind of got um, by the time of PFRE last year was commercial uh, clients. So I think I told you, Brian, that I recently... Yeah, we're speaking about it, yeah. Yeah, I recently got um, Cushman Wakefield. I mean, if you know them, they're one of the biggest commercial uh, real estate companies in the world. I think they have 170,000 employees and something like crazy 30 countries or whatever but anyway apparently I'm, I'm now their go-to guy and it was just like being at the right place at the right time and being uh proactive about you know seeing an opportunity and pouncing basically i shot the home of one of their top executives and just when he was kind of in the perfect timing to look for a photographer their their in-house guy was just leaving and so i just happened to mention like hey if you ever need commercial you know, photography done, I, you know, I, I'd be happy to. And he's like, oh, you know, what good timing. I mean, our guy's leaving and we're looking for a new guy. We love your work. So, cause I've shot stuff for them before. So, um, so I got, got the client just like, just being proactive and being available. So long story short, just like last week, I got this commission to shoot like five technology campuses with 20 buildings. I mean, Fortunately, a lot of them are just exterior, so it's really like quite easy uh, in you know as as opposed to shooting the interiors of twenty buildings. So there's a lot of aerial, there's a lot of ex exteriors. So um, I you know I think that's that's like a really good um, I think payday and and <clears throat> golden goose if I could put it that way. Awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, I've always said commercial real estate is where it's at. I've told you that for years, Sam. You know, there, there's a lot of money to be made. And, you know, I know you're speaking. I think I told you the story about Cushman Wakefield. I shot the executive vice chairman of the entire Cushman Wakefield globally, his penthouse in New York City. And I've been working on him for two years. I can't get in there. 
So, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, just, you know, being in the right place, like you said, at the right time yeah. and just networking properly. Cause I was in his house, in his personal house yeah. and sitting there talking to him and I couldn't, can't get in there. So that's exactly what happened. I shot his personal home and he loved the photos and it's like, Oh, by the way, I could shoot your other stuff, you know, your day job. And again, you know, that old saying about luck is what preparation meets opportunity. So I think that's a good example. Okay. Who are we going to pick next? Let's do, uh, let's do Christine Cole. So uh, we, we've got Chris in the house. PR free contest winner with the dust yeah. shot of beating like, what a hundred people. Uh, yeah. I think there was like 70 people. Yeah. Hmm. So it was, it was cool. It was really cool. It was one of my, one of my bucket list things to, to check off. So that was really nice. Um, You've been telling me for a few months now you want to do it. So I'm glad, uh, glad you finally did. And then I saw your shot and I was like, damn you in that house. God, I love that house. I thought for sure that, you know, every time I post an image from that house that I shot, this one specific house that I, I uh, submitted to PFRE contest, I get a, a message from Chris <laughs> you know, damn you, damn you. <laughs> I Let's, love that house. It's so gorgeous. Well, it's so appropriate. And, you know, I think everybody here can say, Chris, you you get a little star this first year and next year you'll get two stars. But you've really, uh, you've really been killing it and your work has been uh, speaking for itself. And uh, how's the, uh, we've been following you on PFRE for a while. I'm on PFRE, excuse me, little typo, um, on, on shooting spaces for a while. And where you were uh, trying to branch out from uh, what you were doing with uh, your agency, what's going on? Well, I'm still here. And that's, and, and, and actually it's a good thing just because um, I'm finding as I'm starting to go into design, which is really, I'd like to add more that, of that stuff into my portfolio. I can say no to the things that are just not meshing with what my ideal is. And so it's nice to have bread and butter in the back seat while you are looking for dessert. So, um, and then I got my drone license this year and I'm going to start adding that into my repertoire. Um, and I'm working on video stuff too. So, um, I was helping, uh, Jordan and Nick with their, um, beta testing in their new art of real estate cinematography group. And so I've just been kind of going through that course and um, adding agent videos is something that I'm currently working on. Um, I just filmed a huge block of my first one actually Sunday. So yesterday and um, yeah, so just kind of tweaking and working and figuring out where I'm going to go next. But I, I've noticed that your work is becoming more <laughs> I'm forward as opposed to real estate looking. Um, how do you, how does that happen? Well, I think that just comes from my wedding background because the details of wedding were always my favorite things to shoot. And so I think inevitably just having a details of the home are where my heart truly lies as well. So design work is just kind of um, the natural next thing for me. So as a wedding photographer, and since you do interiors and stuff like that, has, has your wedding work changed? Have you, do you pose people if you're in, in the house? Do you, do you use um, uh, like right, uh, reception spaces better than you did before? The funny part is, is I say no to weddings. <laughs> They're really, really good or I really, really like them. So I do have one wedding on the books this year, and that's because they're flying me to the Dominican Republic for a week. So I said, okay, yeah, I'll do oh, that. Oh, wow. <laughs> One thing I got to jump in and say, once I started shooting interiors, um, I used to always do a Dutch angle. And now I, I have a really hard time. And even somebody that I shoot with and shoot for, she always says, what do you, what, what happened? You're not, you're, everything is vertical and straight. That's like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. So I think that was, that's the natural evolution of the architectural photographer that, that turns portrait, because now I can't do it either. I have to straighten it all and level it all out. That's what it is. Whenever I see a bride and groom portrait, wherever it is, and the verticals aren't straight, it pisses the hell out of me. I don't know. Right. You guys. <laughs> it's just that uh, uncomfortable feeling where you say something's not right in this picture. But most wedding photographers I found don't even notice it or know better. So. Well, that's because they're hands like this and shoot. They don't even look through the camera. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's I called shooting from the hip. Yeah. I was actually talking to Daniel Blake. Um, 
was from where is he from switzerland from australia but in australia now. yeah well he's and no we, he lives in he uh, he lives in uh, zurich yeah right i was talking to him and we were talking about the whole um there's not as many rules in portrait photography and there's so many rules in architecture and design and and real estate and how everybody can be a critic because we have to you know follow all these rules and i just said well that's why there's a million portrait photographers and there's a very small niche when it comes to what we do so mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, last, last but not least, we have a little Danny Milstein down in the corner. Hey, Danny, yeah, sorry, how I'm, are you? I'm not here right now, but uh, leave a message. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, have you, has your flight landed yet? Are you, uh, you flying? I, well, now that you guys have forced me to wear the aviation headset, <laughs> I've <laughs> your, to your pull like a Northwest your Airlines helicopter. here. And, uh, pardon me. <laughs> do, your, uh, do your helicopter uh, impersonation. Go. No, okay. I, I I can't. It hurts my chest. I'll break a rib. <laughs> I actually spent I spent an hour and twenty minutes on the phone with uh, my helicopter pilot yesterday. Uh, he started by saying, "Well, you know, aerial photography is really dead for this business." And I said, "Well, it's not dead. I've got a property that I need you to come out and uh, help me with." He said, "Well, what do you need me to do?" Well, I need you to land on the helipad there, and we're going to film you with a drone. The silence was overwhelming. <laughs> this is a guy I've been flying with for, I don't know, 11 years now. Um, and to his credit, he's never raised rates on me, which is wonderful, but uh, uh, I felt so guilty. It's grown. It's like, man, those rates are done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the funny thing is he actually has a Part 107 certificate, so he can do drone work, but he doesn't know how to fly a drone. Amazing. Which, yeah, it makes it all kinds of fun, but... Um, I, you know, no matter how much drone work I do, I still can't get out of the helicopter, which, thank you very much. That's where the aviation headset comes in. Brian, I blame you. Hey, look, you know what? It's addictive. I came up that one time with you, and it was a blast. We got to get you up again. I do need to. You know what it is? We went up that first time, and I feel like that first time I spent the first well, not even the first, but like three quarters of that ride just kind of getting my groove on and kind of learning what to do and figuring things out. And then by the time I kind of got the hang of it, we were already heading home because it was pitch black outside. So how does that feel when it's 11 bucks a minute to keep the engine running and your pilot refuses to shut the engine off mid-flight? <laughs> I like it. Okay, so I, I say that, and what comes up on my screen is Wayne smiling. So Wayne, let me ask you this. Have you ever been on a flight where the pilot said, you know what, we're going to save fuel. We're going to shut down for a little while. No, I have been on a flight where we were going between two mountains and the air was so unstable that the pilot was going, okay, I hope we can make turning around. <laughs> you consider that maybe it wasn't the air that was unstable, it was the pilot. Absolutely. And I, and I told him, I go, it, by the way, if we crash, I'm going to beat you all the way down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing, but every time we get in the helicopter... Uh, two things happen. First, my uh, my pilot says, we go to Montauk for lunch today? And I always give him the same answer, which is, tell you what, you pay for the flight to Montauk, <laughs> and uh, I'll pay for the drinks. I'm sorry, I'm channeling my inner Tony Rosland, but it's oh, not God. a corona, so it's, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. People, <laughs> and for, go, for people oh, that God. Are, not, uh, are not watching, um, Dan Milstein is partaking in a libation in the cutest little martini glass. Uh, it is a it is a bent stem martini glass, but you don't know what's it. That could be water for all you know. That, I, I'm sure it is because you don't drink. Yeah, it didn't take you 15 minutes to go upstairs and get a martini glass full of water. <laughs> and I'm hoping Wait. that water. Nope, oh, not saying anything. Uh, <laughs> there is no olive in here, though, so it really could be anything. I'm not going to tell you what it could be. Turpentine for all you know. Um, so. Uh, Getting up in the air, uh, okay, since we're doing video here, how many of you have your Part 107 certificates? One. I mean, we're raising Two. hands. Oh, raise Half hand. the people that are listening can't see us. So. Red do you well, have that's yours? That's fantastic. All right, uh, Wayne, what's your excuse? I, um, I'm taking my test after my workshop. I thought you were taking your test before the new year. I was, but what happened was it normally, normally just January is slow, and when we got back from the the conference, I just got loaded up. I mean, I, I was, like I said, I, I've been extremely stupid busy until today. 
Yeah, yeah but Dan's getting loaded up, and he's got his, his license. Come well, on. no, I, I, I could be drinking water out of this glass. Um, it's funny. Part of the conversation that I had with my helicopter pilot was about what's going on in the drone world right now. And we, there's a lot of crossover in what we do, but it seems that one of the things that doesn't really translate very well from manned aviation to unmanned aviation, and you really do have to call it unmanned aviation because you really are putting a drone up in the air with planes, helicopters, and other things that have people who speak with one of these and say, this is your captain speaking. But um, it's a little nerve wracking to get up there and think, all right, you know, at any moment, there really could be something between half a pound and 10, 15 pounds. And Inspire 2 with a, a camera on it, it's about 10 pounds all up weight. Uh, you're going to put something a little larger, uh, you know, a six rotored hexacopter with uh, a decent camera on it. Now you're talking 17 pounds with the batteries. That's going to do a lot of damage if it's in the wrong place. And the safety culture is, it's disturbingly different. Uh, you know, if you think about it, when you go up in a, uh, any kind of, well, if you go up in an aircraft, that's manned, uh, before you go up, the pilot has to decide, hey, is this safe to do? Are we going to do this? Is this worth going up? Do you really think that that's the culture going on with unmanned right now? I mean, think about the real estate community. I have to get that shot. Is it worth doing it? Well, uh, you know, it's, I got a Mavic 2 Pro. It's less than 1500 bucks. Who cares? Oh, boy. It's actually kind of troubling. So right now, there are a lot of changes going on. There's a... Uh, a set of proposed rules that the FAA has out, which will come up in future discussion, but it's really going to be a game changer for a lot of people in the industry if it goes through as planned. Uh, it'll increase costs. I'm not sure it's going to do anything to change the culture, but I think that's on us. Okay, on a more simple thing about aerial photography, just like just like cameras, I'm noticing a lot of people that do aerial photography are not photographers. I'm like. Oh my God! Just, is this the picture that you chose to give me? As when when this put things up in the air, I'm be, so I'm beginning to understand that people have their 107, and I'm beginning to understand that how could you not take the picture by just moving over it a little bit? There, so yeah. So as opposed to safety, I just find that a lot of people. It's, I'm beginning to see the separation between people that are photographers and people that are just throwing their stuff up in the air. Well, what was the, uh, what, what do you call just a, a person with a camera? There's an acronym for it, Wayne? Almost. It's called Wayne. No. Wow. <laughs> West Coast there. All right. We have winters over here, so we, we a little different. Uh, was it guy with a camera, gal with a camera, GWAC? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I, or uh, I'm sorry, in the wedding business, Chris, wedding business? Uncle Bob? That's what to say, Uncle Bob. Or, yeah, yeah Uncle and Bob. Bu okay. And Bubba. Bob. <laughs> Although now, I, you know, now with the rise of where's my phone? Now with the rise of uh, of these things, everyone is standing in the aisle at weddings. Am I right? Yeah, we have to. You we can't have do to, that in helicopter. Plug. It falls out. No, the yeah. the new thing is is people are asked to put their cell phones away, and many of the officiants are asking, please, and we have. Two professional photographers ready to take pictures, so please refrain from pictures. And it actually goes really well. So that's a trend that is going in that direction. So I'm, I'm actually glad you reminded me. I'm officiating my godson's wedding this uh, this spring, and I think I'm going to talk to him about doing Unplugged. I'm going to fly out to Seattle. We're going to talk a little while and figure it out. I will not be flying the aircraft to go out there. So, uh, Wayne, good point. Safety culture aside, the number of people who – say, hey, I have a drone. I can do this. I look at that and say, all right, well, I have a Nikon. I have a Canon, so I can shoot property, right? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. The bar has been steadily coming down. Uh, now I shoot primarily the luxury market, so I, I guess for me it's – it's a nice thing I could look at it and say, oh, that, that's a disturbing trend. But what I tell my clients is a drone is it's just a giant tripod. And I attach one of several cameras. I pick my lenses. I pick how I'm going to shoot. I can pose shots the same way I would if I were in a helicopter or on the ground. And that goes to what you were saying. If you're going to take shots from the air, you're either, I don't know, a drone jockey or you're a photographer. And there's room in the market for both. You can make money both ways. 
but you know that with your background, Wayne, I'm picking on you because <laughs> you're on my screen right now. Uh, you're going to look at something and say, ah, you know what, we really do need to be about 25 feet to the left. And it would be much better if we backed up about a quarter mile and used a longer lens. Yeah. Hard to say that's going to happen with someone who buys a drone and says, I'm going to start a business. Um, yeah. But then, again, but then again, there's people like Sam who um, really incorporated his drone work with his, his interior work really well. So, I mean, the, the, oh, it, has yeah. a, it has a nice feel between the, his interiors and his drone stuff. It really feels cohesive and it looks like a trained photographer did both things as opposed to, you know, just um, hiring out drone work for, for, to do the work that, because I don't have a 107, so I hire, so I hire, I hire drone guys. So I always have to really. Now, Wayne, you've heard me say this before, but um, if you're a photographer, uh, learning to fly a drone is easy and mm -hmm. learning all of the safety information, all the regulations to get your part 107 certificate, fairly easy, a heck of a lot easier than becoming a good photographer. Um, and certainly these days easier than meeting some of the people you've had the benefit of gaining experience from the old man in Carmel. <laughs> I can't believe you said that in Las Vegas and <laughs> only a few people that were realized, Oh, it's Ansel Adams. It took me a minute before I realized, Oh, Oh, he's being modest. Okay. But uh, if you're a photographer, learn to, you know, learn to control the drone, learn the regulations, do it legally, do it safely. And you have an edge on everyone out there who's just saying, ah, I have a drone. I'm going to make a business. Yeah. Photographer first, and the drone is a tripod, so it's second. So and Christine, what are doing with your drone? Um, Christine is waiting to get her drone. <laughs> so I went and got my 107 just because I was slow, and I utilized that time to go and get my website going and to get my drone license, and then the drone's coming here in the next month or so. What's your new website, Chris? Uh, K Cole or K Cole photo dot com. Great. And how'd you do it? Who'd you get it to do? Uh, somebody to do it for you or what's the story with that? No, I did it myself, um, through a company called blue domain who makes, um, websites for gear for photographers. I'm still tweaking. It's still new. Um, but at least I have something now. So when someone says, Hey, do you kind of see it work? I'll just send it to the website. Mm-hmm. Hey, you doing Instagram, Chris? Sure am. Yeah, I see I'm that. in it going. <laughs> yeah. What's your Instagram handle? K Cole Photo. Cool. Just like my website. So uh -huh. everything's cohesive and branded the same way. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of work. I, I, I'm just thrilled. I got a job last week from a, a, a agent in San Diego. Never met me. I still haven't met him. Sent a check to have me shoot for him. Found me on Instagram. It's great. No complaints. What about you, Sam? Doing Instagram? Are you stealing clients from my turf? I hear San Diego. Uh, I don't think he, it might be from San Diego. Yeah, he, he specifically <laughs> said, you're not Sam Chen's friend. Right? I said, no, <laughs> never heard of him before. No, it wasn't your kind of thing. Don't worry about it. So when are you going to come down and visit your daughter in college? Yeah, we, she's a we need Loma. A, we need to do happy hour. Dean's yeah. list, guys. Dean's yeah. list. Not my, not me, my daughter, but uh, she is rocking it. She's doing great. And I will be down there, so I'll let you know. I'm, I'm going in for a little knee surgery, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with my year. But, uh, it's all that you'll walk in in Squaw Valley. Valley. No squee. I went one day this year, and I said, I can't go anymore. Made up my mind. I'm going to go in under the knife. So. That's the thing I miss okay. about Northern California. I used to, you know, I, I worked in uh, Silicon Valley for 10 years, and we had a cabin right by Truckee, and we would hit – um, Sugar Bowl, wow. North Star, you know, Squaw Valley. Yep. Um, and then sometimes South Tahoe, even like Kirkland, or, or sorry, Kirkland, Kirkwood. Kirkwood. My <laughs> wife, Kirkland uh, is Costco. My wife uh, was at Squaw on Saturday, and yeah. they had, uh, I, if I'm not incorrect, uh, Kirkwood had 200 mile an hour winds. Whoa, Oof. wow. I think, yeah. I think it was two, 220 something, believe it or not. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, that's hard to believe. Oh. My favorite is North Star. But. Yeah, it is a great, great, 
great town too. Ice skating and cocktails. Uh, you just it's so great. But uh, I know we're squaw people now. But I'm just uh, got one day in skiing on our pass, and and now my pass is the uh, the epic pass, and I can go. I want got it to go to Salt Lake City where my son's going to school, and uh, was going to go to Snowbird and Jackson Hole and and nice. Aspen, and, and not anymore. <laughs> That's gone. So. Oh. So I forget what was the question. What was the what? question? I don't fucking know. Oh, excuse my language. Uh, <laughs> no, let's talk more about Tony and his drinking. No, <laughs> I, I got to tell you that Tony Roslin, it was a nice surprise. And uh, I really did enjoy uh, and I've utilized some of the things he, he spoke about. But it was it's worth everybody. Let's all talk for a minute about the PFRE conference 2020. But the one in nineteen uh, in twenty nineteen, um, it was just a great great time. And uh, aside from seeing Wayne speak, but we had some just great speakers. And um, Tony Roslin got up and he's he's two fists and beers and he's walking up and down and and he's got this smug way about him. And and it was just pretty cool though. I I, I really enjoyed uh, meeting him and, and watching him. You know, it's so. funny. He he messaged me a couple of days ago because he's doing a workshop out here in New York, I think in Brooklyn, um, in the next couple of months for product photography. And he messaged me and he says, you got to get me, in, let me know where some good beer spots are. So yeah, right up his alley. <laughs> Just take him to McSorley's. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 20 beers at a time. What do you get? You know, 10 dark, 10 light. Uh, exactly. Got the wood chips on the floor. Yeah. What do you, so are you, are you, uh, who's going, raise your hand if you're going to PFRE 2020. Raise your hand so everyone listening can see. I think I'm probably going this year. Yeah. Wayne, are you going? Okay. Yes, I, I, I will be, it'll be fun going as a non-speaker. <laughs> whoa, 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 what? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Very you, you did your time, that's it, you're out? I did, I did my time. You know, I, I talked about old style photography and off to new stuff. All right. <laughs> so I have buy you an omelet and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I'm, bought more this time. Uh, by the way, the it's, omelet and the drink will be at 2 a.m. Oh, mm. God. No, no, no more 2 a.m. mornings. <laughs> Did you guys, you guys all went to uh, In and Out Burger, right? At 2 a.m.? I was nope. on that trip. None of you, you were on that know. trip. I don't think any of you were on that oh. trip. No? No, t Tony Rosalind was there, speaking of him. And uh, yeah, we ended up at In N Out Burger at 2 a.m. after that party we had that night, somehow or another. There's only one In N Out Burger <laughs> in the country that's worth going to. Which one oh, is that, on. Dan? Anyone? Sam? What? Sam, help me out here. Oh, the one in what Southern you, what, California. What are you talking the about? one In N Out Burger one. in yeah, the country one? that's worth going to. Which one is it? I don't know. The one by LAX. Yeah. The original uh, one. The one Tell us, right why? on the approach why? for two five uh, sorry, two four right. Right. Where Mike Kelly goes. Where, where I have a the shooting? Sam has way? no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is going. Knows, I, I have a picture of Sam standing <laughs> he's maybe two hundred feet from the threshold of two four right at LAX and there's a plane in the background and plenty of smog and he's holding up it looked like a 70 to 200 sort of at this angle I can't even do that anymore but uh, I know yeah, what you're that talking was, about that was a Canon workshop right uh, mm -hmm. right next to the runways and I don't know what did it take about a year Sam for us to actually exchange the pictures that we <laughs> shot of each other for that uh, it's, anyway so tell us what you're LAX, talking about it was a Mike Mike Kelly workshop right yeah, so it, Mike, Mike convinced Cannon, I think it went that way, Mike convinced Cannon to do a workshop on the grounds at LAX. Um, in order to shoot inside the perimeter fence, you have to get a, a film permit. Film permits are about 10 grand, but it doesn't specify or it doesn't limit the number of people you can have in the crew. So the crew was actually the entire population of this workshop, which was, what, about 18 people, Sam? Yeah, about. Yeah. So it was, you know, 2017 and 2018, but we were at one point, um, by some fancy GPS measurements, fancy, uh, 125 feet from the side of runways where A380s were landing. If you've never been that close to an A380 when the engines are spooled up and actually making the thing fly, you have not experienced noise and chest thumping or an airplane for that 
matter. Really incredible. But uh, that's actually where Sam and I first uh, met in person. It was, you know, on the grounds at uh, LAX, a Canon workshop with Mike Kelly. Unfortunately, there's too much construction because of what they're uh, gearing up for for the upcoming Olympics and no film permits at LAX. So the workshop for the moment is uh, it's on hold. We might have to try and get Canon to do something at uh, JFK. Brian, JFK, you'll be there. I'll be there. I have no contacts there, but I'll be there. It'll oh no, you just have to show up and pay a lot of money. <laughs> all right. I yeah, guess. I love how you say all right, but the expression said uh, yeah. no way. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get we'll get a sponsor to take care of that. Uh, anyone in here sponsoring him? <laughs> no? Yeah, I used to work on a lot of movies at LAX, and it's always a uh, not a thrill. It's about as far from a thrill as could be, but a lot of bureaucracy, very difficult. Uh, the smell of diesel fuel, just uh, it's it's a very interesting place to work, but uh, I, big big rules. I actually uh, I, I sort of had the opposite experience, Sam. I, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but the uh, the airport operations folks, uh, the airport police. Um, even the person driving the bus who never shared her name with us, but was really nice. Uh, everyone there was really professional, cared about what they were doing. Uh, just wanted to keep us safe, make sure we had a good time. And after uh, Sam was there for the first one with me and they said, yeah, I will, uh, we'll have people back. Uh, the following year, they even, uh, you know, required fewer staff members. The only problem now is the construction. They do care about safety. Well, that's because Mike Kelly dealt with probably all the difficult people and all the red tape. Because once we showed up, everything was smooth. But I'm sure it was not exactly fun trying to get everything approved. I thought we were the difficult people. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Just going to throw that out there. But I will say, now I, I'm a Nikon guy. I'm an MPS member. Um, I've been Nikon since two years old with a Nikon F in my hands. I had to give that camera back to my dad, but I stole it back from him as an adult. But I will say Canon runs some amazing workshops. Um, I, they brought in some of their best trainers and all the gear you can imagine. So if, if you have a chance to, uh, to attend one of these Canon workshops, it doesn't matter if it's in uh, real estate photography or something else. It's fantastic to just meet photographers from all over. Again, that is how I met Sam. And uh, I'm sure he regrets it, but it's been uh, it's been fun for a couple of years. You have to preface that you're a Nikon shooter, though, too. That the, that it, you are a Nikon shooter, it, regardless of the camera that you use. But the Canon workshops are a really good workshop. And I actually shot Canon during the workshops. Uh, well, I mean, Wayne, you know this. I sold you the. Uh, Would you buy my my uh, 17 millimeter tilt shift? Yes. Best lens there we go. So, well, now I've got a 5DSR and no lenses for it. So uh, <laughs> the last time I used it was at LAX and I borrowed Canon's lenses for uh, for the but shoot. Since you, since you are on a podcast and there are people listening to it, you should tell everybody that you have a camera on sale. Don't I wish I, I – good point, Wayne. I wish I had the shutter count in front of me, but I have a fairly low shutter count Canon 5DSR <laughs> that I have babied. And – I'm hesitant to part with, but uh, send a message to Wayne and he'll tell me that you're interested in my camera. <laughs> I'm going to back yeah. away from this slowly, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so no. Wayne, Wayne bought your, um, your Canon camera and he also bought your Movi uh, gimbal. Yes, I bought, I bought, Dan's, <laughs> bought your Movi. Uh, I our, have a lot of stuff. You need well, more I, stuff. I, I can yeah. see photo equipment behind you. I keep mine in bins. Uh, you can only see a little bit. Well, I thought good. You disclosed location. I, I like the I like the, the duck work. Above your head. <laughs> well, something's got to get out the fumes. The chemtrails are they're going to kill everybody. So I got to get those out of here. It's just, they came from the aviation headset. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're drinking turpentine. You got to get it out. Of <laughs> hey, Chris, water. where are you? Where are you at? Are you? Is this your office or your home office or what's? Well, where are you at? This is this is Sotheby's um, office. Okay. I'm actually in not even my section of. I'm upstairs, but I borrowed somebody else's desk for this. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, where are you at, Sam? What do you? What do you? What's behind you? Is that your? Your workroom or your... This is my man cave, and this is a Ikea uh, modular bookshelf, so you could actually put it together and stack them. Um, <laughs> this is kind of my graveyard of, of drones, if you look up there. Uh, that's a Phantom, I think, 2. 
Um, I've had <laughs> – nice, Daniel. Thank you. Um, if you look carefully, there's a Mavic right there. So I'm on my second Mavic right now. There's a 70 to 200. So this is kind of my man cave and studio. I have a home studio. I work at home. Um, I thought about getting an office. Like I have a bunch of friends who are – renting studio space um, kind of down the street and it's like a thousand bucks a month. So I thought it's just so much easier to just use your second bedroom as a studio. So I work from home. You just don't want to shave before you go to the office. <laughs> exactly. Or he oh, sorry, likes wearing under, working in his underwear. Yeah. Um, where, I'm actually where, naked, naked down there right now. <laughs> no visuals we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> just like when I was in LAX, it's, you know. And Wayne, now, I wanted to ask you, knows. how long have you, you've got a really, I've been, I've been to your studio in Monterey and you have been having your studio for how many years? Have you been in the same studio? No, no, I've been in this studio for 15 years, but 15. I, the, the, from the very beginning, when I first started, I've always had a studio. I've never worked out of the, I've never worked out of the house. I said, you know, um, I was a portrait and wedding photographer and I had to have a studio and um, yeah. So I've always had a studio. Mm -hmm. I, I find this a nicer, I find it a nice place to work and just um, come to and get work done. Yeah. As per um, my, I had a conversation a couple of years ago, I needed to get more productive and I needed to, I was just saving all my work during the day and editing it at home after a twilight in the summer, which I get home at 10 o'clock, 30, 10 o'clock. And I had a big conversation with Scott DuBose and uh, Scott got me into editing on my laptop. And I now let edit, even with two big monitors in front of me and my, my desktop, I still edit now. All I edit on is my, my laptop. And my, so my office is Starbucks. I do most of my work in Starbucks. And I I'm, I'm found the Starbucks I like. I like the people there. I have great place to always plug something in. And it works for me. So it's been working really well. And I get more time at home. Starbucks is, the, is um, a lot of photographers in my area. Um, mm -hmm place and things like that so I, it is you know people can always find starbucks and things like that but i just you know i like having the place to work yeah. you know it's star starbucks is also a very nice and safe place to buy things like yes. I, you know when i when i was starting out i was on craigslist all the time all yeah. I, I you know you've seen probably <laughs> shots of my gear 90 percent of my gear was bought secondhand uh, I think every till shift lens, except for one, I have three of them. Uh, we're all bought, uh, secondhand. My 5D Mark IV, my camera A was bought secondhand. Like pretty much everything was bought secondhand. All, all exchanged at Starbucks. Sam, how does that work? Do you, do you walk in and say that you want a, a, a venti blonde roast <laughs> and uh, that 17 millimeter tilt shift? Uh, uh, oh, and the Mavic over there. The Mavic would be cool. Maybe the X7. I, yeah, the, the Canon 17 millimeter tilt shift with an extra shot. That's what I asked for. Venti. <laughs> Got to use your language. Venti. Where are you working at, Brian? Where do you do your editing? I do my editing right here where I'm sitting at home. Mm -hmm. um, Starbucks occasionally. Um, it's good to have that fallback. It actually happened last week where I needed to, a client emailed me and they needed stuff an hour later, um, which doesn't typically happen. And I don't usually um, bend to that. But, you know, it was a job that I just finished last week in Toronto for Gucci and they needed this stuff right away. And I happened to have my laptop and hard drive with me. And, you know, I, I Googled the closest Starbucks and went over there and got the stuff to them. So, you know, that is definitely uh, something to have to your advantage or use to your advantage if you need it, you know, when you're on the go, because the, there's Starbucks everywhere and just to have that internet. But most of my stuff is here. Um, unlike you, I have a 32 inch monitor. So I like to see my stuff nice and big when I'm editing. Um, but occasionally, you know, if I, I have the new uh, MacBook, so it's a 16 inch monitor. It's pretty, pretty big too for a laptop and it's, uh, helps me, helps me work on the go. But. So not that you were a name dropper, but tell us more about Gucci. Um, <laughs> you just did a job for Gucci. Uh, where did you go and what did you do for I Gucci? Went, I went to Toronto. It was fun. It was a fun time. And how many shots did you do in Toronto? Four shots. For Gucci. They sent me four to shots. Toronto for four shots for uh, 
two days, two and a half days. Mike Kelly, who? Watch out. Okay. Yeah. It was fun though. I actually went. I saw Matt Stallone studio. He's got a really, really nice place over there. So we hung out for the day, ate some lunch, did some uh, podcast recording with him. And then at night, I had to wait. To, it, Gucci was having a pop-up store in the mall. So we had to wait for the mall to close before we can shoot it. So we had to wait till about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Went out there, did some shots. By 10.45, I was done. And that's it. They sent me there for about 45 minutes. And the hotel they put me up in, it was called the Drake Hotel in Toronto. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Toronto or know much about it. Um, but I found out it's apparently a very trendy hipster hotel that becomes a club after 11 p.m. The, whole, the hotel becomes a club, not just there's a club in the hotel. So to get into the hotel, there's a line out the door with velvet ropes. And they told me at reception, when you get there after 11, just show the bouncer your room key and he'll let you in. So, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to be a fun time. So when I got back from the shoot, you know, at midnight, I showed the bouncer my key. When I uh, went in, I had to upload some footage to Italy to get them that stuff right away. But you can't sleep because my hotel is literally, a, it's a small hotel. It's like a two floor hotel. I think the whole thing has like 18 or 19 rooms. And literally there's a DJ right underneath me blasting electronic dance music. So your client, what's that? Your clients knew we're going to put you up in the Drake. <laughs> Uh, apparently well it's funny because my contact there also the the other guy who f is from new york who flew there also said same thing as me i can't believe they put us like what are they expecting we had we had early morning flights the next morning 6 a.m and we got back to the hotel at 12 had to get some work done and yeah there was no sleeping i had dj music blasting in my room all night so i will not be staying at the drake hotel anymore it, it held you up <laughs> it held you up for editing your four photos okay I, I as just, long as your pilot was yeah, right. sleeping there, if your yeah, pilot was sleeping there, then it's an issue. That's yeah, just, exactly. I hold up the empty um, bent martini glass. Well, whatever. since I wasn't sleeping anyway, I had no choice but to go downstairs and grab a couple of drinks. <laughs> and again, this episode sponsored by Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> by the Drake Hotel. Yeah, the Drake Hotel. If you go to Toronto and you want to party, go to the Drake Hotel. That's you there you go, for you. right there. Exactly. Or I, I, think, I think I still have the room key in my wallet. You can give me a call. I can get you into the club for free <laughs> with my room key. This episode is brought to you by HD Photo Hub. With modern marketing tools for your clients and a powerful back office to help you stay organized and efficient, HD Photo Hub is a secret weapon of successful real estate photographers everywhere. When you register with promo code Shooting Spaces, you'll get a free total marketing kit for your first property. Check them out at hdphotohub.com. HD Photo Hub, where great photos become powerful marketing. That's hdphotohub.com. Remember, this will date you, but there was a show before you, Oprah, which was Phil Donahue. The Donahue show. Mm -hmm. Chicago. And again, I apparently, remember. Chicago. So anyways, if you looked, if you looked at Phil Donahue's guests, there were um, murderers, child molesters, all these other really bad guests. And at, at the end of the show, he always said, they always say, our guests stay at the Drake Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> People will know that there would not be an Oprah Winfrey without Phil Donahue. Absolutely. Or the Drake Hotel. <laughs> the Drake Hotel. So when you said the Drake Hotel, I went, People die there. <laughs> 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 Not the Drake Hotel Toronto, though. No, no, but that, that's what I mean. Like, it's like whenever I hear Drake Hotel, I always think of the guest <laughs> where you fill down. You feel like, <laughs> I want to stay at a Drake. You know, I want to. I got to say, it was so much fun staying at the um, oh. South Point. It was it the South Point Inn or the South Point Plaza or something for the uh, PFRE conference. I had such a good time and got to spend time with everybody in this picture. And uh, there it is, South Point, the club. You go, you go there, you wait in line for two minutes, and they give you a card for free, and you get like 20% off the buffet. And that's it's where Daniel and I are going to be. We're yeah, just, that, Daniel and I are going to be there. <laughs> you know, if you spend enough at the blackjack table, you give them enough money, they will give you an omelet worth uh, 39 cents. I did not gamble one penny. Who gambled? Uh, who gambled when you were there? I did not. Oh, gosh. 
Chris, did you, Christy, did you? Uh, no. No? I didn't, okay. No. Sam, I'm sure you did a little bit. No, not at all. I'm in a, the arcade type. I was looking for their arcade. <laughs> and Wayne, they, they Wayne. Call those slot machines. I only, yeah, I only did the slot machines waiting for people. Well, you know, it's like I'm standing there. I might as well put some money in the slot machines, but it's, no. No. And Brian, did you put any money down? I did not. I actually uh, I didn't went do there with uh, planning on, you know, playing a little mm -hmm. blackjack, but it just never happened. It's not so the greatest right. casino. I wasn't crazy about the casino. It actually has a lot of locals. Um, yeah. So I, I'm a blackjack player. And at risk of not being allowed to play blackjack um, at the South Point again, although they did get some of my money in the last trip, I... Um, I gave you an omelet, apparently. Count... <laughs> Do I have to finish that sentence? Yeah, you do. You, you, yeah. you, you gambled. I did. I gamble. Uh, it's simple counting, and sometimes you come out ahead, sometimes you don't. It takes a little bit of discipline. It's a grind. You shouldn't drink. And, um, well, I broke the rules. <laughs> Again, back to the aviation headset. But it was a great time. I, I was at a table full of locals, and it's unusual in Las Vegas to actually get people who live in Vegas gambling who aren't there uh, through an addiction, which, uh, you know, of course is a problem, but they were just having fun and it was we were, phenomenal. People, we were commenting, we were commenting on that when we were going through the casino. It's like everybody was gambling. Very few people were smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, did you see, I, maybe we talked about this at, at the 2 a.m. omelets. Yeah. Did you see the guy at 7 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning? It was me. You were sitting at the bar in the middle of the lobby. You were not wearing a jacket and tie, having a, no joke, a martini. That he didn't look like he'd been out all night. He looked like he had just put on a freshly pressed shirt, a jacket, and tie, and he's sitting at the bar in the middle of the casino playing video poker and drinking his martini. Only we're just getting into the conference in the morning. It was, what, 8 o'clock start the last day? Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was impressive. I'm going to say he was a local because no one else would have been able to find a freshly pressed shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that was the telltale. So for the conference, is everybody um, registering their photographs for copyright? <laughs> you know, it's funny because what I started doing, because the way Rachel explained it um, is you can do batches of 750 at a time. And we're actually going to get into it. We're going to have her on the show um, in the next couple of weeks if uh, everyone wants to tune in. Because um, we, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but we actually just released, we've been working with her on a contract for real estate photographers, a contract template that um, you can purchase. And uh, you have to obviously change it for uh, depending on your jurisdiction or what your business model is. But uh, a template to, uh, I guess, get you off on the right foot for licensing and covers a whole bunch of different provisions. But um, what I started doing was I created a folder on my desktop that I started putting images that I want to make sure to copyright in them because we can bulk copyright 750 at a time. I want to obviously take advantage and, and copyright as many as I can at a time rather than just putting a bunch here, a bunch there. So when I get, you know, a couple of hundred, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So yeah, I haven't done it yet, but I, I've started the process. Yeah, no, I, I, like I said, from, from the conference, I learned, I learned an awful lot from the conference. I laughed a lot of, I laughed, I laughed much more than I thought I was going to at the conference. And I'm glad I met Tony in person. <laughs> and, and Wayne, I will say, I uh, actually did a little video the other day. I don't know if we're going to release it because the, uh, the sound quality is really bad. But I just did a video on uh, light farming in your honor, and I mentioned your name. But I've been working on light farming, and I got that from the conference. So that was a really wonderful thing and a great surprise. So uh, it's, it's coming along really well. And I did some uh, personal projects this year. So uh, I'm, I am – and I – as I keep saying, I'm going to slow the F down. I don't slow the F down like today. I shot 10,000 square feet of light sucking darkness and uh, I was running fast. So, was it anyway. a mahogany varnish of some kind with an ocean view? Yeah, there's no ocean view, but uh, it was just everything sucked. Sucked, sucked. The floor sucked. The the brown leather furniture sucked light. Anyway, but uh, it was pretty exciting. I had a good time though. And, How many uh, images did you shoot in ten thousand square feet? Uh, I probably will deliver forty. 
uh, interiors. Mm-hmm. So more than Gucci it. needed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's four interior. Okay, yeah, no, more than Gucci. But it's for a great thing, and it turns out the um, the owner of the house is, um, her. she owns a construction company, and they do siding for commercial buildings. You're talking about, you met the uh, Cushman and Wakefield. So we're talking at the end, and I go, yeah, you own a construction company? She says, yes, yeah. I said, what are some of the buildings you've done? She says, well, we did, the, um, we did all the siding for uh, the Apple. And I said, Apple? An Apple store? She says, no, the, 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 the donut, or I think she said. Anyway, so they're, they're talking about some pretty big stuff. And hopefully, maybe I'll get in there and, and get to work with them on some uh, commercial work. So I'm excited about that, but uh, we'll see. So really uh going to use some of those some of those tools i learned at the uh, pfre conference so so chris are you going to do a workshop what am i going to do a workshop <laughs> no i not anytime soon <laughs> okay so bro, when, from you, when you did your first interview here and we're talking about a year and a half later are you how are you shooting differently i think that i like differently um more so from the direction of light. It's really about respecting how the light is naturally coming into a home rather than just forcing it out. Um, I don't, you know, I think your eye just constantly evolves. It's just part of the natural process of being an artist. I mean, you're never going to get to where you want to go. Or you're never going to be in the same spot that you started and you're always going to constantly evolve if you're, if you're trying to grow at least. So you're, so you're what you're telling people that are listening to the con- this thing is you actually literally are slowing down when, you, when you're shooting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I sorry. think you're it's, slowing the F down, right? I'm slowing <laughs> the F down. Um, Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you're being methodical about your choices too. Also, you're, you're thinking more about what well, you're doing. I think that you, you're, you're looking at composition and then you're looking, okay, so how is the room naturally lit? Okay. So then how am I, how can I respect that and enhance the way it is naturally lit anyway? Um, you're always going to blend with your ambient, but I think that really um, tapping into that, that natural situation. I mean, I shoot more naturally, I guess now than I did before. I'm not so much, um, flashing just a flash. And I think sometimes you have to slow down and just realize that the light is beautiful the way it is, rather than just, I have to light it because I have to light it. So. Cool. Okay, wait, so we're talking about personal projects. Sam, what are you doing for your personal project? Well, um, one, of, one of my first loves is actually time-lapse. And so actually right after PFRE was over, I went straight, I just made a beeline. I took an Uber straight to Stratosphere. And um, I went to the top of the Stratosphere and set up my GH5 and shot um, time-lapse of all, you know, this, it was, it's called Holy Grail because that's when daylight goes into twilight. And it's very challenging because you have to keep tweaking the exposure. But it was amazing from Stratosphere. You could see, look down the strip, you could see all the lights and all the there's helicopters flying over, all the uh, light trails from cars going by. So that was actually like, okay, I'm proud of myself. Pat on the back. I was able to sort of take what I learned from PFRE, the inspiration of you know Mike Kelly's personal projects and just went straight to it. Ever since I've gone and done more time lapse in San Diego, but one of the things I've done is to join the local chapter of Light Chaser. It's like a national group on Facebook, but it's called Light Chaser, and I've been very involved with the, the local chapter. I've gone to their potluck. I've gone to their meetings and critique sessions. I've also um, been involved with these Del Mar Fair, County Fair, photo contest judging. I, I've judged for them before, but you know, I took some time off a few years and then I'm back now just to be more involved with the community and to, to help judge, to help give back. And kind of like what we do all the time with the uh, Facebook um, real estate photography group where we kind of help the up and coming to you know give them encouragement, but also critique. 
Um, things like that really makes a difference. I think the PF, PFRE really taught me that because I, you know, Rich, if you remember, you um, invited me to that uh, vendors after party or, 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 or party that was upstairs in that one hotel. And that's when Nima, I forgot his last name, it's like uh, Mohammed. 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 Yeah, he came and he like made a beeline for me and he's like, you, you tore me apart five years ago. You <laughs> critiqued me and it broke my heart. But then I didn't let that destroy me. I went back and worked on my photography. And five years later, I am in a different place. And thank you. You know, so that's that's one of the anecdotes of PFRE that I love to share is that you get to meet people that you've interacted with on Facebook, but also to meet them in person and, and have them tell you that what you did for them was helpful it was productive and constructive um so anyway that you know that was kind of just a little kind of anecdote to share from why you should go to pfre next year i've also seen some of the work you showed me the la some landscape work you've been doing too yeah. which has been pretty pretty phenomenal stuff yeah exactly i i think you know one of the things one of the take-homes from mike kelly's talk was just do what you're passionate about and the the money the 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 clients and gigs will come after the fact one of the things that we're blessed with in san diego is our natural beauty and we have so many landscape sunsets ocean you know the the, the la jolla coastline and tide pools they're just waiting to be kind of you know appreciated and conquered and you know captured so I've been spending every minute I can reasonably when I'm not editing to go to these amazing natural places and just to capture these locations. Um, if, if they're not really for fine art, they're not really to sell, but they do something for your soul. And I, I think that's one of the things that I think is important is that when, you know, nine to five, we're doing 24 seven, our business, of making sure our clients are happy, but are we really being satisfied and happy and insatiated with photography? I mean, the reason why we got into it in the first place is that it does something for us, you know, our soul. And, and so when I'm out there shooting these amazing landscapes and the sun setting, you, you can't help but kind of pinch yourself and go, okay, now I know why I got into photography in the first place. And um, the fact that you can share this with Light Chasers, which is a group in, on Facebook, have what people it, who give you feedback and give you um, comments, it's, it's wonderful. What, what exactly is Light Chasers? Yeah, if you go on um, Facebook, you can look for Light Chasers. And I think it's they, they've got chapters all over the country, but there's one in San Diego. And these are people who uh, have, it's just a community basically. And they have challenges every month, like, oh, this month you're gonna shoot the, the full moon or the lunar eclipse, or you're gonna do black and white. They give you reasons to go out to shoot. And I think that's so important to be connected to your local community and to meet the people, you know, flesh and blood, not just Facebook, but people that you can actually have a beer with and talk and um the person that runs our local chapter is wonderful she uh lives and breathes photography and she opens her house up for potlucks and meetings and critique sessions so i think that's like one element of photography that we should all try to seek out because it really feeds the soul because you know we all know that clients kind of you know knock us down over and over by at the end of the day. Um, so it's important to really just seek out people who are outside of this sort of business world and kind of reconnect to why we got into photography in the first place. Mm. Cool. Well said. Wise words. And Dan, what do you have to say for people that are um, starting the year out, starting a new decade out? Um, what, what do you recommend? I, I was just listening to Sam thinking, you know, do what you love and you'll find a way to make money with it. it. May take a while, but 
Sam, I I was listening, thinking the passion that you have for what you do is something that everyone should really either learn from or latch on to. Uh, not to have a whole bunch of people latch on to you, but I, it, it, there really is something to it. it there are times I, I, I work with an assistant, and we go out and we'll shoot. Uh, it's primarily a luxury property. And we go out, and every once in a while, we just look at each other and say, can you believe we get paid for this? We're licensing photos to people that we created while, yeah, that was worded very carefully. I did, Wayne just popped up on my screen. He's nodding his head. We license photos to people after playing in, you know, the, the sunrise over Southampton and seeing the ground fog roll in. And we're doing ground shots. We're doing interior. We're doing drone shots. And it's just stunning. And then we go play in a helicopter and I wear the goofy headset. And I get paid at the end of the day for it. So, yeah, I, I have little personal projects here and there. But for this year, I, I'm looking at things saying, you know, professionally, I'm having fun. What else can I do? I, I picked up more video this year. I'm doing more video work. Don't know that I'm any good at it yet. I'll find out. Um, but I'm doing it because I love it. And, yeah, some clients, Sam, you're right. Some clients will knock us down. But they can't really take us down if we're doing what we love. And that, to me, is what this is all about. I do drone stuff because I love seeing the world from the air. I do helicopter stuff because I love wearing the headset. No, I love actually spending time in the air. You know, doors off, feeling a little bit like a bird. I, Brian, now that you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. You still owe me a Brian's video, by the way. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? It, it looks like this because the mount wasn't really that good, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I, but it is, it is the best profession I can imagine. And... Uh, there really is nothing else that I'd rather be doing. So what am I doing for 2020? I'm spending more time in the air. I'm doing more video. I'm shooting more for clients I like. I'm shooting less for clients I don't like. Is that a luxury? Yeah, I've known it since 2008. Uh, got some great advice from people like, um, oh, Wayne. <laughs> um, uh, Scott, Scott Argus actually gave me some of the best advice I've ever received in my career. It saved me a ton of time by giving me two or three pieces of very critical information. Um, he tore apart a couple of pictures in a very nice way. Uh, you know, not, not the internet trolling we have now. And it stuck with me. We were talking about it recently, but I'm, uh, I'm just looking forward to going through this year and just doing more of it. It's that good. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. I mean, we are, we're all in this industry because we love doing it. It's, this is not, a, you know, we're not, we're not sitting behind a desk. So we're all doing this because we love doing it. It's not, it's not something we don't have a passion for. So even if we all just go out and keep shooting, it's, it's cause we love it. So. But you, Rich, you're asking all the questions. I know you got some, some personal stuff. You, you did some <laughs> projects a, a couple of weeks ago. Are you crying, Rich? I, I'm crying. <laughs> just, Dan Milstein, Milstein's <laughs> words are so, and, and, and Sam, you're just so wonderful. And Chris, and I love you, and, and Wayne, you're, you never but um, I am just keeping busy. I've, I've got some uh, really great projects coming up this year. I'm uh, going to be spending time down in Mexico. I, we have a house down in Mexico now, and uh, I finally take care have of your a, health, though, though. Make sure that's your have, priority. Get your needs back in order. But I've got a house that I could stay up in the top and I could take the same picture or in 360 degrees every single day of my life for the rest of my life. And that was my dream to always have, I could take a viable picture from somewhere in my property. So I got that going on. But um, I am I'm doing, uh, doing about 15 weddings this year. I'm doing about 12 races, uh, doing some houses and, uh, and getting the operation. So I'm busy. That's about it. Cool. And I'm, I'm so thrilled, Dan, also. I am thrilled to be able to do what I do. I'm on my second, my second fantasy career, and I can't tell you how happy I am. And the good part is, the best part is, I don't miss my old career now. I'm so into my new career. And I, I love teaching people. I spent the day having somebody shadow me uh, on this huge house, and it was so enjoyable. And so I'm, I'm thrilled with um, just having the opportunity to coach people and teach people and, and really, really enjoying it because people like Chris, man, I met you, 
Chris at a at a, one of our workshops, and uh, it's led to just seeing how you blossomed not only into a fine person but into an established photographer doing really well and producing fantastic work so it's great and even you little sam chen i've been seeing you raise up from a little boy but anyway uh so that's it no, that's, that's it oh wait a minute oh, here's my thing here's my here's my takeaway from from pfre like people thought that me and sam were the same person i finally got to meet sam in person broke my heart that he's taller than me i don't care photographer <laughs> to me it broke my heart that he was taller than me an oriental thing, <laughs> you know. When I met Sam, I'm like, fuck, you see, it's all in there. <laughs> and we've gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> that was my takeaway from PFRE. That's you know, when it. when matter and antimatter come together, usually there's chaos, destruction, and another world. Just be lucky we're still alive. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Than me. You go through all that, but you're taller than me. I'm good. I was wearing I heels. Hug. I want to see you guys hug in Las Vegas this year. I just want to see if annihilation actually happens. How many people confuse the two of you in Vegas? A lot. A lot. When you can say Sam is going, no, like, no. How? <laughs> I'm not even going there. But uh, I just want to. I just want to say I want to thank all of you that I'm looking at on the screen for being with us for 100 episodes. That really is something, I will say. And thank you, Brian, for uh, being there and doing all the technical work. And just to have a community that we can help and also call upon to come on and entertain people. And uh, just what a great opportunity. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, Rich. Rich, when we started this, uh, I guess it was two years ago, just about this time of year, I think we got together and we said, hey, let's uh, let's just – get on a mic and talk and see where it goes. And if it turns out well, we'll release it as episode one. And now two years later and a hundred episodes, here we are. So it's, uh, it's been a wild ride and a fun ride. And uh, we thank you all for being with us a second time or third time. If you've been here more than twice. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Nice thank you. And uh, I guess rich, we got our work cut out for us to get a hundred more in the can, <sighs> but uh, we'll <laughs> Like a Ridge's face. <laughs> well, we're, we need people to do ask the guys, man. Call them in. Call them in. Um, but no, people, we've got people some People don't in. realize how hard this really is. Not only just the, the recording parts, which we're doing with you now, but the editing and just trying to produce original content every yeah. week is, is, is difficult. So, you, you, know, know. You, don't, you don't have to edit all of Sam's stuff out. I mean, it'll be okay. <laughs> He's slept in. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just dub his voice over yours, Wayne. I know. We keep the myth that me and him are the same person. Voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to touch that. If people come out and watch us on YouTube, watch this episode on YouTube, you will see that they are not one and the same. And I think for people that are listening, definitely uh, try to come back and watch this on YouTube because you know there's six of us on here and um, you know, it's probably going to be a little difficult to differentiate the voices as we speak. And it's, it's definitely going to be a lot easier on YouTube. So uh, if you have a couple moments to sit down at the computer and watch on YouTube, you'll, you'll get a much better and more enjoyable experience with this episode for sure. Okay. So I don't know if any of you remember or know the tagline that I always do, but if you do, <laughs> let's all say it on three, okay? We want everybody to go out and, and learn more, shoot better, have a great time. But most important... Go a cash shoot, <laughs> shoot some, some spaces. spaces. That was a fail. Yeah, really. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay you're, I'm gonna get somebody else next time. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us, and uh, I want to say goodbye to everybody. And and uh, we will be with you probably again on the uh, podcast. Each and every one of you on another future podcast. Add measurements expert to your credentials when you purchase an iGUIDE IMS5 camera. iGUIDE is a turnkey solution that expands a real estate photographer's business beyond photography to add 3D tour technology, laser accurate floor plans, reliable room dimensions, and square footage calculations. Visit GoEyeGuide.com to schedule a quick demo and see just how easy it is to incorporate iGuide into your real estate photography business. Tell them you heard about it on Shooting Spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit ShootingSpacesPodcast.com. 
and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.